Welcome everyone to day two of EA Global Summit 2021. This is Juhi again from EA's Global Summit organizing team. Thank you everyone for your continual uh, efforts and time towards in joining us for this session. This session is by Daniel Siegel from Lieber Lieber presenting this session about lemon tree components. Kindly be informed that we will be muting all the participants throughout the session. And if any of you are having any questions, please use the chat window or questions window to drop your questions to the speaker. The speaker will answer the questions during the end of the session. And also to enable more one-to-one -one communication with Daniel and also with other EA practitioners across the world. Following to the session, we request you to visit Lieber Lieber meeting room in MS Teams. The link to the MS Teams channel is posted in the chat window for your quick reference. If anyone is having any difficulties still in connecting to Teams, please reach us in the chat window or drop an email to registrations at eaglobalsummit.com because we may need to add your email as guest in our MS Teams. Thanks once again for your interest and support to EA Global Summit 2021. Looking forward to another informative session with Daniel in this year's summit. Over to you, Daniel, now. Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon for the colleagues from the Asian side or a happy midnight to those listening from the US. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, a new feature set that uh, Lemon Tree has since Lemon Tree 3.0, uh, which is capabilities uh, to provide reusable model components for your enterprise architect models. Um, Lieber Lieber, I don't know. I think we should be pretty known in these circles, but anyway, we are an Austrian company uh, with an office in Houston, Texas, and our main focus is uh, to make enterprise architect work for industries that have safety critical norms that build cyber physical systems like automotive, medical, um, all of these types of industries. And this is what we do for a living. I, I was raised being an enterprise mobility guy, uh, but uh, very soon in my career, I started also always to be a tool maker to develop solutions around uh, modeling tools and other tools. At the moment, I'm heavily involved in model based systems engineering, also on the standard side, sides of things. I'm involved in the pro step. Uh, consortium, which is an automotive consortium that wants to intro industrialize the exchange of SysML data. I'm a deputy assistant director at the INCOSI for standards, and I always uh, listen and uh, comment on what the OMG is currently doing. And this is uh, at the moment a very exciting time because, as you might be aware, OMG is working on system LV2, so there will be lots, there's lots of things to come also from this end. Uh, the first thing I want to show you to wake everybody up, I have a short video uh, that will explain what we do, and then we will do a more traditional presentation. Sorry, something went wrong. Uh, Daniel, we, we are seeing a bit of latency in the video and also the audio wasn't, uh, it's not that audible. Okay, so we skip the video. Yeah. If it, if it doesn't work, we skip it. Yeah, we, we can just add this video as uh, in our channel uh, later okay, for people perfect. to 
see here. Yeah. No problem. No problem. So as I mentioned before, um, we target companies that build safety relevant cyber physical systems. As I said, it's automotive, it's some um, uh, space and aerospace technology companies and um, medical and so on. Interestingly, more and more companies from other domains like banks and insurances uh, start to also use parts of our of our technology, of our approaches, because they see that what the uh, safety critical guys do makes also sense for them. Daniel, I'm sorry to interrupt once again. Uh, we are not seeing your presentation screen now. Um, okay. Just sharing. Yeah, yeah. We can see your presentation. That who uses Lemontry with EA? Yeah, this was the. Right. You haven't seen this slide also, right? No, we haven't seen this slide as well. Okay, no problem. So this is basically who we target, uh, people that build safety relevant cyber physical systems because they have loads of norms uh, to fulfill in order to, to have uh, um, the legal um, requirements fulfilled to deliver the resolution. Here is some references from our automotive customer base. Uh, it's companies like Volkswagen, uh, like uh, Veoneer or Magna Electronic, uh, or in Asia, uh, type of uh, groups like Daihatsu or Subaru or Samsung SDI, ZF. So there's plenty of companies in the automotive industry using our technologies. And uh, one of the big things for all of them is uh, that the pressure in the market gets bigger and bigger. They have to develop uh, uh, cars faster, subsystems of cars faster. So they have uh, various uh, solution strategies. One is the model-based systems engineering. On the other hand, they need uh, good configuration and change management. They need to act more agile. They need to comply to various norms and the supply chain is always changing as well. So one of the solution scenarios, overall solution scenarios that they are aiming for is a platform or product line approaches uh, to develop product. And we will look at that in more detail. This is today's focus, how you can do platform or PLE approach using enterprise architects. So when we talk about the platform and product line approach, this is now an airliner example. Uh, you typically have a platform, how to build an, an airliner, and then you have various products. In this case, it's product line A, product line B, product line C. And obviously sometimes during a project, the platform might change inside the project and you need the capability to update the platform after the changes. And then you might want to propagate at the time that fits the project, not automatically. This is an important point uh, into the other product lines. So you develop a change to the platform in one product line. And then as you move on at certain points in time, um, you release or publish uh, these changes to the platform to the other product lines. And also this, this, um, these capabilities that we build uh, uh, to do this product line development with Enterprise Architect can be used for various, various other scenarios also. You can also send, for example, a part of a model uh, to a supplier. They can uh, add their stuff and send it back and you can reintegrate it this would with the supply chain or you can use the same capabilities also to, for advanced team collaboration or uh, what we see also more and more that people basically have given up on the concept of 150% models for variant management and uh, they use branches and our lemon tree component strategy uh, to be able to manage uh, the, the variants of one product with the same technology uh, that we introduce for the product line development. 
the life cycle of the reusable model components is basically independent of the main model. What you see on the left side is the initial enterprise architect model where we can extract various components and you can store them in some sort of a package repository. This can be a version control system, this can be something, uh, a file system, whatever. This is not part of our core technology. Uh, we offer flexibility here and then you can introduce these components into new models and use the components to build new models. Interestingly, the first time a customer wanted to have a SysML library from me, uh, reusable was like 15 years ago. So it's been a long time till we finally arrived at the stage where we feel we have a usable solution uh, for, for this type of component, componentizing uh, models. Interestingly, the concept is again, as you know, as you might know, the lemon tree concept is very heavily influenced by software engineering and the best practices in software engineering. And this is again very close from, from the ideas, from the concept that we use a method, method, methods that work well in software engineering uh, to manage the models, which would be Maven or NuGet, typically package management uh, component driven software development. And the beauty of this is at the end of the day that you can, that you can have a life cycle for your product line, uh, for your platform, and uh, the most effective thing about all of this is that you can have um, the that you can exchange components or update components independent of this uh, life cycle of a product line, the main life cycle. Uh, imagine you have a project for customer A where, where you use an old version of a controller of a of a uh, mini computer in embedded mini computer and for the new project you already start with a new new design a new hardware component so you can reuse everything uh, from the old old model but just replace the part uh, with a newer version that con contains the embedded mini computer at the later stage when maybe you you sell your custom an update of the initial product line, you can then simply exchange the part of the model that contains the mini computer and update the product line or the project independently. So, and one key thing about this uh, creating components from models is always the dependencies, because generally speaking, our models are so powerful because we have so many connections behind the scene it's like a graph and uh, if we, we look at it uh, there are several types of of uh, dependencies we can have between elements it's typically connectors like like you see in the middle or you can have graphical references which means elements are used on diagrams or you can have type classifier style um, references and we ha and Lemon Tree 3 has some uh, visualization uh, for, for this uh, type of, of dependencies. This is this graph that you see here in a rather small project, but I think very interesting is this picture. It's from a real customer uh, that is using the technology uh, since quite a while now, and uh, in this case, the um, the cyclic references are colored in red, so it's very easy to see where there might be a problem in the architecture. Lemon Tree 3 can handle uh, cyclic references, uh, but obviously it's not what you want. Uh, it makes perfect sense to resolve those and change your architecture accordingly. Okay, enough for PowerPoint for now. Let's look into Enterprise Architect. <clears throat> we start with a fresh, fresh Enterprise Architect and we create the new model. Uh, 
obviously uh, this model now will be empty and we can start to, to introduce components from our model component library. So I go to specialize, I choose the lemon tree add-in, components, and the first thing I need to do, I need to configure the location of my component library. In my scenario here, uh, this is a, a path in the file system uh, on my local computer and I add it and that's basically everything I need to do uh, to be able to use lemon tree components uh, to add uh, components parts. So we let's go to import and you can see there is several uh, components available that I can introduce. Uh, we will click away most of them for now and let's say we want to uh, modify the system context. Now when I click on system context you can see automatically domain knowledge and base architecture are selected. This is because Lemetry Components is aware that the system context uh, has dependencies to those two. Still, I can click away the dependencies and import it. And uh, we can see here uh, the system context was imported, but there is a concept that we call placeholders for every dependency that is not here. Uh, we create placeholder items uh, traceability view and and those uh, basically give you give you the elements that we need to make it happen okay so this is maybe a better example you can see the port here uh, is 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 represented by placeholder Despite this not being complete and placeholders and everything, still we are able uh, to modify this. So, for example, I can add a node and create a relationship and, and all of this. So this is not necessarily stopping us from working, but it's simply not complete and the elements are shown uh, as placeholders. Now, if we go back to the lemon tree components and I click on reload, we can now introduce the missing bits, uh, this base architecture and domain knowledge. There is one cool feature here. I can decide to do this read only. So the component will be imported, uh, but the, the user will not be able to modify it because we move it into a special package. And so I need to reload here. And you can see this reference components. And here is now the base architecture and the domain knowledge. And I cannot modify these bits and pieces, okay? This is also helpful because it helps you uh, to keep your architecture straight. Uh, because somebody modifying or using elements uh, from, from these parts uh, cannot create links that would change the element, okay? Ah, in this case it works, but uh, anyway, so this is, this is the whole idea uh, that you're not able to modify these elements. You can create elements here uh, like the trace, but it's not possible uh, to alter alter these elements, okay? And this is really a cool feature and it helps you uh, to have everything in sync. Once I'm done and I say, okay, my changes to the components are really substantial, I want to return them to the platform people. I can again go here and uh, go on uh, publish and the cool thing now is we will see okay system context was modified and if I cannot recall what my modifications were I always have lemon tree at my 
a support and I can click on the lemon tree button and lemon tree will come up and show me exactly uh, what we changed and th I think this is really a powerful powerful solution to be able um, to control uh, this whole package and component workflow in a very good fashion because I can see the diagram was changed and one new element was added and this is what was my intention. If I'm done I click on publish and now what happens uh, there is a JSON file written uh, to my hard drive and we can see it here system context and this is another cool feature of our of our technology I would say that we can double click on this file and check what's in there so if I go to the MPMS system context I can see okay it contains the system context and it has a note uh, that we entered before and this is very helpful because before updating components or using components you can peek into them uh, to see what you will be getting later down the road. Uh, we have seen before uh, the capability of the placeholders and I want to show you one, one last thing about the placeholders now. Uh, I can go here and say I want to remove one of the components from my model. Something that is also very difficult if you use uh, other solutions for the same problem. In our case I can go here and say delete. Also delete the packages from your model and we can now cleanly remove the previously imported component uh, from from our model and again we will introduce placeholders for the missing bits so even if you import the component by mistake or you want to make the model uh, slimmer down the road and so on you can safely again remove components which is a pretty uh, substantial feature and and sometimes very hard to do if you're based on on, on other mechanisms to achieve uh, similar solutions. Another thing that we will look at now is how do I create the component. Uh, for this I will change into my second, uh, second Enterprise Architect instance and you can see here we have a model and it's um, created in a way that we see uh, rather often that there is the structure of architecture requirements, use cases and so on. And then below that you have the, the platform specific stuff, uh, the customer A specific stuff is basically hidden uh, below the topics. And obviously this uses some platform parts and now we want to create the component for this customer A. So as you might I close this lemon tree window really quick and now we go back again to the lemon tree uh, component stuff and we say specify and the specification you have seen the screen before when I showed the deletion but this is where the packages are um, defined or the components are defined and if you paid attention you can already see uh, that this is platform specific stuff okay uh, and the platform contains three packages not just one and here you can see even all the dependencies why uh, there is uh, this arrow here why there is a dependencies between the two components so I think this is pretty cool stuff here and now we create the new component and the trick here is that we can take sub packages of several uh, packages and create the component uh, that consists of packages that are lying in different parts of the hierarchy to create a logically, logically useful uh, component without having to restructure my modeling pattern. 
Now, if I click on create, my new component, the customer A was created and I can click here and I can again see the dependencies and so on. So this is really uh, helpful stuff uh, to make, make things easier uh, with reuse of models, with platform engineering and, and so forth. And obviously now once uh, I maybe didn't save it. No, I saved it. And now you can see, okay, I can now publish the customer A component to my local repository pass. I'm not sure if this is the correct one, but anyway, uh, you get the idea how, how you can do this. And now we created a component that can be reused elsewhere. Uh, let's check if I got the correct Yes, I got the correct one. And now we go back to the consumer model again, to the demo model, and we will import this customer A uh, to show you how it will arrive here. So I go here. I go here and say import, and we will now only import the customer A. despite there is dependency on platform, but yeah, maybe we import the platform because there's also some read-only stuff going on. So we import platform and customer A. And we close this window. And now you can see immediately after the reload that uh, we have this architecture requirements and uh, customer A stuff here. And because we choose read only on the compo on the platform, the platform has been uh, used in this space. Now again, maybe I didn't get it very nice before how to how the read only works. If I now use a requirement as a link uh, from the platform, I cannot change it. Uh, somehow, yeah. <laughs> I can use a trace link, but not in the other way, but I cannot type in the notes and nothing. So it's it's really not changeable. And uh, this is super helpful, okay? And again, you can see the, uh, the hierarchy that we had in the original model was brought across despite this is one component. So these three packages that have been created is really one component. Now that I did some changes uh, and I'm not happy with them, I can also use lemon tree and go to revert. And the revert capability again uh, gives me uh, some um, lemon tree support so I can check it out or I can click on revert and use the power of the lemon tree merge mechanisms uh, to do a selective revert on the changes I did. For example, I don't want this change in the use case diagram or I'm not happy with this change on, 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 this, on this element. So I can uh, choose uh, to go with the original one, which is uh, the orange one here, okay? And this is basically uh, the functionality and and how you can handle it. We don't want this relationship. It's gone anyway in the in the merge preview in the automatic. So I click on start merge. And now if I close it, uh, there will be a revert of the changes that I did to the model uh, based on this model component technology. And Obviously, a full industrial workflow uh, is something that needs a little bit of uh, work uh, to be understandable, uh, but, but this is exactly what we do uh, to make these things happen and, and help you deploy these types of solutions for your challenges in your organizations. Okay. So this was the demo part of the Lemon Tree components. If you have questions up to here, we are happy to take them in the chat. 
and I would have some time to answer something. If not, we move forward and go back to the PowerPoint. So, uh, what are the highlights of our of our solution at the moment? It's the fast JSON file-based export and import. Uh, it is the powerful dependency analyzer. Um, we have several customers that love this lemon tree component stuff for the dependency analyzer alone. Uh, we have the capability to do read-only packages. Uh, we have a Git client to some extent in EA, which was not part of this of this presentation today. And the text diffing is also a lot improved over previous uh, versions of Lemon Tree. So again, when you when you look at the full Liber Liber story, um, the important part basically is um, that we do not try to reinvent the wheel, but we try to use established workflows from other disciplines, mainly uh, software engineering for the modeling, like the branching, the Git flow that we showed yesterday, or now this component stuff. Uh, how how you can avoid working with 150% uh, models because one of the key problems of this 150% model variant management approach is always that you cannot control when you want to exchange a component to a newer version. As I said before, I have, for example, a project for Honda and one for Yamaha. And in the Honda project, I have to stick with an older version of a hardware. And in the Yamaha project, I can new, use the newer, newer version of the hardware. And if at the, at the later stage, I need to update the Honda uh, project to the newer version of the hardware, I can exactly define when I do this upgrade. With 150% models, you typically can't because it's all at the same stage and it gets really, really complicated if you want to achieve that. Yeah, and the idea basically is to reuse assets uh, from your modeling um, practices, uh, either for a platform PLE approach or as a general uh, model library where you can have standard components. And because of the precise versioning and control, when you update, you have a very consistent development process. And as I said also yesterday, this really tremendously, these technologies also help a lot when you need to onboard new people into the modeling. Because one of the biggest things we see in our day-to-day -day consulting work is that if people, if every change the people, the new people do is live immediately, and somebody says uh, a maybe not so nice word after they messed up the model, uh, you lose people's interest in becoming good modelers. If you can provide them with tools and playgrounds to learn their trades in an offline fashion, but still have an automatic way uh, to integrate the changes, you will see tremendous positive effects when you try uh, to introduce new users uh, to the modeling efforts in your organization. And also the components can be used in a very nice fashion uh, to transport parts of your model to your supplier or to your customer because you can hide stuff that they shall not care about, but still not lose the con context. It's still the same. We will maintain the same EA GUIDs, and you can transport also parts of the model between organizations. So I was rather fast this morning, uh, which is awesome because we have lots of time for questions. Yeah, thank you, Daniel. Thanks for the wonderful session. So we have a um, good bunch of questions for you to answer here. So the f first simple question is, what's PLE from Rolf? Product line engineering. Okay. 
Okay, and the other question from uh, question is, does it integrate with Mercurial? Uh, this is a question we need to discuss offline. Uh, generally, okay. it's based on files, so yes, it can integrate. Okay, and the other question is, any white papers which describe the user journey with PLE approach from Matt Thomas? Okay, we are working on that, but uh, if if you need uh, some some more stuff on it, uh, we please contact us and we, we have some uh, early stage material. Okay, and the far last question for you to answer here is um, when you import lemon tree. Uh, when you import lemon tree are the funct functionalities you use for creating lemon tree automatically part of the model or import maybe shall i paste this question over in your chat yes. screen to get the context properly yes, yeah please. yeah so yes i'm just pasting this question to you directly Okay, so I do not, yeah, let's try to answer. I am not 100% sure what, what you mean, but anyway. So this whole lemon tree components is built on the engine uh, that so many users trust and love from the classical lemon tree that is the different merge tool that you can integrate into version control systems. The big advantage is that in any step of the process, be it import, be it update, be it revert or, or publish, you always have lemon tree at your disposal to check and validate what you are doing. So there is no black box anymore. And as I shown before, this is such a little feature, uh, but for me, it's really exciting that I can double click on the element and I can peek into a component before I send it somewhere, before I use it or import it into a model. So this is a really powerful thing. Also, if you remember the example I showed before where I removed the component again from a model, this also wouldn't be possible if, if this whole stuff was not built on the uh, lemon tree uh, um, uh, core. I hope I got an answer for a question. I didn't 100% understand. Okay, so thank you, Daniel. So we have good number of questions too. Still, I'll be pasting all those questions in the uh, Liber Liber channel for you to take forward the conversation. Yes. Couple of questions need a few direct conversations with uh, participants directly, so they prefer uh, they prefer to talk to you directly. Uh, so I'll be pasting all those conversations over there for you to take forward after the session. Okay. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, thanks to everyone for your time during the session. And I hope this session gave deeper insights in Lemon Tree components in, you know, in Lemon Tree 3.0. Now the speaker will be available in MS Teams to have detailed discussions and one-to-one -one conversations. The link to Microsoft Teams is pasted in the chat window once again for your quick reference. The recording of this video will be available in eaglobalsummit.com with complete Q&A and the discussions underneath the video. And we will be notifying you all by email once it is made available so we'll be making it available after a couple of days after the summit maybe later next week uh, so yeah that will be helpful for the participants who were not able to join during due to the lack of time uh, time uh, time and availability so thanks once again everyone and looking forward to hosting you all in another wonderful session at the summit shortly thank you daniel thanks for the awesome session once again yeah, bye-bye. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, everyone.